Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Cannabis Capital Markets Conference goes on. We are now in the late afternoon, and with me here is Rubicon Organics. And uh, Jesse McConnell, the founder and CEO, wants to give us an insight into his terrific company. Welcome. Thank you. Happy Jesse. to be here. Yeah, Jesse, great to have you here. And uh, we already discovered uh, with some name typing here, with, uh, you also have a relative, uh, meaning your father, which comes from the mining. So that's really funny. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but uh, we are not in mining today. Today we are talking about cannabis and about your company. Maybe mm -hmm. you can give us in three, four sentences a little roundup of, of our company. Certainly. Uh, well, we are a premium organic cannabis company mm -hmm. uh, focused on high quality cultivation at low cost. Uh, we're not miners. We're not stock promoters. We are operators who've been in the space for m a multiple decades. We have a legacy in the space, mm -hmm. and we're really looking forward to getting out there and showing what we can do. And I think you were the founder of the first cannabis company? I was the founder of the first certified organic cannabis Certified company. organic. So oh, that's interesting. That was Whistler yeah. Medical, uh, okay. which was uh, the first legal certified organic cannabis country, uh, company in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking to be the third certified organic cannabis company in Canada right now. And we've just listed on the CSE last week. Okay, perfect. Super. Then let's dive into the business. Sure. What's going on now with, uh, let's say, your production methods? I think they're quite unique. You have uh, put a lot of uh, development and R&D inside. Maybe you can elaborate a bit on that. Certainly. Uh, what we did is about 14 years ago, um, my uh, chief scientific officer, a fellow named Peter, who's a professional agronomist, mm -hmm. they spent about six to eight million dollars developing uh, an organic cultivation system for tomatoes. And he put that system in place under 40 acres of glass greenhouse production. They were, the, they were the largest producer of organic tomatoes in North America. We took that cultivation system. We put it into Whistler. We began to refine that cultivation system specifically for cannabis. Mm -hmm. We then worked directly uh, with the, one of the regulators there to write the certified organic standard for cannabis for Canada. We were mm -hmm. contracted to do that. We got Whistler through its certification process. We then spent two and a half more years refining that system, and we're about to put that system into scaled greenhouse production. And it'll be the first truly certified organic uh, cannabis company that's mm -hmm. operating at scale. Mm -hmm. So when you say organic, that means you are planting really in soil then? I mean, that's exactly what it means. Uh -huh. And by planting in soil, we actually build our own soil from the ground up. Mm -hmm. We don't go purchase it. We purchase compost. Mm -hmm. We test that. We run that through our labs to make mm -hmm. sure it's giving off nitrogen at the right levels. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. we add sand and we add Douglas yeah. fir bark and mm -hmm. a bunch of things I can't tell you about because it's trade secrets. Mm -hmm. And then we yeah. have our own fertilizer company mm -hmm. where we decompose all... Uh, old fish carcass mm -hmm. and a bunch of other things. And the mm -hmm. smell is absolutely terrible yeah. there. But we make The result that. is important, I would call it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to visit the fertilizer part. <laughs> no. But if you take that fertilizer yeah. and put that soil together, what you end up with are the kinds of plants that are extremely healthy mm -hmm. and they have the flavors and the effects and the aromas that the consumer is looking for. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So what is then actually, let's say, the competitive advantage of the method you are doing? I assume you get a much higher quality product maybe. And also I could assume um, that, uh, the, uh, that the plant plant itself is more resistant against diseases or, let's say, bugs or whatever. Well, what's interesting about what we've been able to do with organic production is typically your yields are much lower in organic production, about mm -hmm. 60% of what you'd normally be able to achieve. Mm -hmm. Because we've been doing this for such a long period of time, mm -hmm. we've created a system that, in fact, our yields are beating hydroponic yields. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's, that's unique in the mm -hmm. industry. Um, and the resulting product, I think the easiest analogy to use is something like wine. You know, there is a state grown grapes that are absolutely beautiful, that produce the kind of premium product that people mm -hmm. are willing to pay extra for. Mm -hmm. And then there's grapes that are grown in Central Valley in California on a, a giant field. Mm -hmm. And that produces, you know, an okay product, yeah. but that's not the kind of product we're Kind of mass production. It's a mass produced it. yeah. product, you know. Mm -hmm. It's your cheap, another example is often jam. Mm -hmm. You know, the jam that your grandma makes, the strawberries in her backyard. Best. Absolutely <laughs> delicious, right? But to scale that, way too expensive. Yeah, yeah. So we found a way to create and capture all those flavors, mm -hmm. put that into that kind of production system. Mm -hmm. So you can buy your grandma's jam now, but for the same kind of costs as large scale volume production. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Do you also achieve then a higher sale price for the end product? Uh, I mean, that's really what we've been trying to focus on is mm -hmm. <clears throat> what does the consumer really want? Mm -hmm. You know, And the happy accident of that 
uh, for an investor's point of view, is you're mm -hmm. going to get a price premium. Mm -hmm. The consumer in cannabis, especially in cannabis, I don't like to throw numbers around, but you can look these ones up. In Colorado, 90% of the, of the consumption is 6% mm -hmm. of the population. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big spread. Mm -hmm. And those consumers are really, those are the regular cannabis users. They're looking for a premium product. Mm -hmm. And you'll see huge price differences between conventionally mm -hmm. produced product mm -hmm. and the high-end product. Okay. So if we look at the marketplace in Canada, and I'll use the example of last week where Canada federally legalized mm -hmm. the consumer uh, recreational cannabis, mm -hmm. uh, which was fantastic. We're very excited about <laughs> that. Um, Whistler Organics or Whistler Cannabis was selling its organic product for mm -hmm. $17.99 a gram. And then on the low end, you saw products selling for about six dollars from mm -hmm. other companies. Okay. So that price premium is, you know, and that value is being mm -hmm. recognized by the consumer. Mm -hmm. Super. So let's assume that you do not get maybe the highest price for that, but uh, let's talk a bit about numbers and margins because this is important for investors. Yeah. So where do you see your all-in production costs? Um, and I mean really all-in, no surprises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stay on the conservative side, and then let's say you can achieve a sale price of six, seven, eight dollars. Well, certainly, you know, the uh, legalization in Canada is going to have high prices out the gate. Yeah. We don't build our models on $17. Yeah. But it's demonstration to the, uh, that the marketplace is interested in paying a premium mm -hmm. for that organic product. Mm -hmm. So the way that we're going to create margin between our production and the retail mm -hmm. is going to be by producing all of your own soils, all your own fertilizers, truly understanding how to run high-tech agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, by using the power of the sun, by locating our facilities in places that have the absolute best growing climate in Canada, where it's a, it's a little microclimate in a place called Delta. We mm -hmm. have the lowest uh, electricity cost in Canada. It's, that's all hydroelectricity. You know, we use LED lighting. As I said, we build all our own uh, soils and fertilizers. And so we're expecting, once we're through the optimization phase, to be around 50 cents a gram production. Wow. But, I, you know, but we're not the kind of company saying we're going to have that out the gate. Mm -hmm. You have to get your biomass up. You of have course. to get into production. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's where we expect to be in around 12 months of production. Mm -hmm. uh, but we should be around a dollar right out the gate. Mm -hmm. Super. That is perfect. I mean, that's a decent margin. Even if you get a price for three dollars, uh, sorry, that's a two hundred percent upward margin, if you would call it, or sixty-six percent downward. So that, this is outstanding. Yeah, those are margins a lot of uh, companies really dream of. I would say. Well, I think it's. A, I think you know what's interesting about the marketplace mm -hmm. today is you're going to see high pricing for at least a few mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. You know, and what's very unique about the Canadian companies is we have the experience now. We have the regulatory frameworks mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the trend toward global cannabis. That's an unstoppable trend. Absolutely. That's happening medically, that's happening recreationally, mm -hmm. and it's happening across the world. Mm -hmm. So as we see price compression happen in our domestic market, which is an inevitability as mm -hmm. supply uh, increases, we're able to export that globally. And we've gotten in front of that by becoming eGMP certified, mm -hmm. which is European is the European GMP standard. Mm -hmm. It's taken us about a year to go through the process, and we expect to receive that uh, certification by the end of this year, beginning mm -hmm. of the following, oh, wow. which allows us to export to places like Germany and the rest of the mm -hmm. European And that's Union. then for medical, of course. And that would be for medical? Prescripted. Mm -hmm. Well, it could be once you see some of these other countries uh, move toward recreational products, mm -hmm. you'll still be able to export, but the key would be to have that eGMP certification so you know the supply chain is transparent and it's safe and secure. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely critical to having a well-regulated global marketplace. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Great. Well, that sounds like a great plan. Um, when you say you go in production in Q4, but first you need that license to produce and then you can plant. Is that correct? Correct. We, we've taken an approach of build the facilities, build the team, raise the capital that we need to be ready before mm -hmm. we go out there and list. Mm -hmm. And then Q4 of this year, we're expecting our license to cultivate. Mm -hmm. And upon receipt of that license, we'll be in cultivation immediately. Okay. And how long does it then take? Let's, let's assume you get it in the next, whatever, four to six weeks. Yeah, You can start to plant everything. How long do you have to wait until you can harvest? Because then you have the first real product, right? Well, technically, it takes about eight to 10 weeks to go through a flowering uh, cycle. Mm -hmm. But we're going to take our time in this in this uh, first harvest. Mm -hmm. We are looking to produce a premium quality product, remember. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to just pump it out as fast as we can. Yeah. So for us, it's going to be Q2 of next year before we see our first sales. We want to get our plants in there, make sure okay. we're growing only the healthiest, mm -hmm. having only the best. And once we start optimizing, then we're going to release the product to the marketplace. Okay. And not before. This is the long game, not a short game. That is good to hear. Perfect. So it's sustainable, of course. Yeah. So, okay, let's assume we are in Q2 now. You start with the sales. What are your, let's say, what is an estimated revenue 
take it on the lower end for next year maybe yeah and what could you imagine on what growth paths you are running then for 2020 I think what we can estimate and be very clear about is mm -hmm. we know the kind of production we can get out of our facilities. So in Canada, we'll be around 12,500 kilos a year when mm -hmm. we're optimized there. Mm -hmm. And in uh, the U.S., it's around 4,500 kilos a year. Mm -hmm. So in Canada, in the first year, remember, that's a ramp up for us. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> if you take that 12,500 kilos a year over a full year of mm -hmm. growing, then I'll let your viewers decide what they want to apply in terms of pricing. Mm -hmm. Domestically, we're going to see prices anywhere between four and twelve dollars. We'll be able to sell directly to the mm -hmm. consumer as well as do some wholesaling. Mm -hmm. And then on an international level, we see pricing anywhere from eight to fourteen dollars. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's going to vary. It depends on the marketplace. Mm -hmm. What we're going to be really laser focused on is having our operating cash flow maximized. Mm -hmm. So we're going to choose the marketplaces where organic cannabis is the most important to the consumer there mm -hmm. and, and focus on those kind of marketplaces. Super. And can you grow the business then out of the cash flow or do you need to raise additional money? The cash flow that these facilities can throw off uh, is pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. um, but if you step back for a second and look at what the global opportunity is, mm -hmm. uh, the rate at which this marketplace is developing, you know, you have to choose a strategy. You can build your, your business out of cash flow if you have the right uh, assets already in place, which we certainly do, or you can look for an alternative strategy, which is to be part of the global conversation. And if we look to do that, we may look to do a financing sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. But right now, we are just focused on cash flow in the business as it exists today. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that uh, sounds to me also uh, like organic growth, but it's also quite healthy growth because it does not put the shareholder on risk all the time. Right, and also dilution is minimized. Well, yeah, and that's important. I, well, we have a very, very tight capital structure. Mm -hmm. We don't have a billion shares out. We've got thirty-six and a half million shares. Wow, out. super! Who are the largest shareholders? How many shares do you own? Um, well, you can look that up on the Sadar listings. But yeah. between founders and management, we have over sixty percent of the uh, company. Sixty or sixteen? Six D. Six zero. Wow. So that's a but, lot. Well, and founders and management are escrowed yeah. for thirty-six months. Good. Um, and we are all that's common shareholders. Fair. There's mm -hmm. no preferred shares in our mm -hmm. in our company. The way that founders and management make money is by our shareholders making money. Super. That was a great final sentence. Thank you very much on that. Wish you all the best, and I'm pretty sure we hear much more from you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Jesse McConnell, the founder and CEO of Rubicon Organics. And you heard it, the company is on a solid uh, path already, even if they are a young company. And uh, they are in the front uh, to get their production license and then they can start to really plant. Everything is in place. They are ready to go and production should really come online in, the, in Q2 next year. And then the company will start to make some money. So check it out as valuations are still low. Thank you very much for watching us. Bye-bye from Frankfurt. Bye.